You have a mouthful of Skittles. Mouthful of Skittles. Could be better podcast. I'm Claude McGuire. Mm, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm holding Chris's phone right now, which is weirdly big and wide and girthy. Girthy. <laughs> girthy was the word I was going to use, too. I was a um, journalist in a previous life. So I'm going to, yeah, well, <laughs> that makes one of us. So what happens is every time Chris gets to read the ad, I'm going to read this right now from Old Mother because they sponsor us. Do you know how much they pay us? $400 million. Bleep, 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 bleep. A month. It's one crazy summer. We are reading this now because why, Chris? Because it's the end of the summer, baby. The summer is coming to an end. It's a pineapple pale ale, 5.1 alcohol. <laughs> With the last days of summer upon us, we decided to save this ultimate summer beer for last. One Crazy Summer is a 5% clear, crisp, dry, pale ale brewed with ripe pineapple and a touch of sabro hops to give it that little kick of coconut. This is limited in the amount of cases that you can get. Go to Old Mother Brewery. Colin, is that the only beer that's there? Because I feel like there should be two. There was... I didn't have the strength for two, but we're going <gasps> to go back. Wait, oh, wait, 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 wait a second. Okay. Hey, we're, guys, we're going to stop this podcast real quick. Ricole's calling us. Ricole, He's inducting we're gonna, us all night. We're, we're going to pause. We're going to pause. Know. We're going to let you know. Wow. That was the bet. That is our first time we've ever been interrupted with a FaceTime call from a friend and a reoccurring uh, segment where we dunk on Ricole. Well, we actually did. There have been a couple times where people have tried to call me and it's come through. Uh, Has it? The computer. Yeah, and I just immediately get that because you're professional and you don't cut people off. But Ricole <laughs> ended up. I thought this was just going to be about you talking about his sneakers. Yeah, he just ended up going in on me. So. I know, which is not fair because I deserve to be pillaged. I deserve to be ravaged, just like <laughs> Ricole's sneaker game. <laughs> oh my god! Dude. And he don't want me to go in on it. No. I was keeping neutral, but now that he's saying. I'm not a good interviewer. Right? This is. I know. Weird. After you gave him that beautiful piece in the Frederick News Post, which you can check out on FrederickNewsPost.com. Or it could be better.com. God, it could be bettermath.com. You can check out all of our stuff. Man, we have so many cool things coming up. I'm, I'm excited to see where this next couple months take us, to be honest. It's not going to take us anywhere. Who are you kidding? But let's talk about it. Oh, 100%. Because uh, we have a couple minutes here before we get to mm -hmm. our guests. So tell me something. Tell me that, something. Uh, you want to get to the other beer, don't you? Oh, was yes. That, was that something you wanted to talk about? Oh, yeah, you know what? You had your chance. <clears throat> and then your friend called you, so I'm going to take this one over. This one's the Daydream Wild Berry Hard Seltzer. It is as hard as Ricole's sneaker game. <laughs> it's now a, that's soft, bro. <laughs> soft, bro. <clears throat> it is a 4.6 AB bleh, Delicious Wild Berry Lemonade Hard Seltzer. Uh, no cans are available because two cans are too many cans and there's no cans for this so you have to get it uh either bring your in your growler on wednesdays because colin brings in his growler actually the only time colin drinks beer is on wednesdays when he can get the extra points <laughs> yeah i would if yeah. that was the case but i have i have had some beers lately yep yeah you've you've, uh, you've slipped um so yeah yeah anyway so come get your growlers and get them filled or just come enjoy them at the brewery um speaking of which true. tuesday nights Nobody has That's right. nobody has shit going on on Tuesday yeah, nights. And so, so every showcase. single Tuesday, and we actually just locked in our last musical guest for the year 2022 for the Artist Showcase at Old Mother. It's every Tuesday, people, from 7 to 9 p.m. You'll get bands that'll um, work out some new material. You'll get some new awkward folks that have never played music or have not played music recently, and you'll kind of get to see some special things happening. Um, but it's a really cool opportunity. Colin, you were there last week. Um what was what was what was your th thoughts on that? Well, it was great. There was a lot of acoustic guitars. Uh huh. A little jingling, dangling. Singing. Yeah. A lot of singing. Singing. A lot of no. I mean, this is this is really a cool thing, and it might take a different shape in 2023. It might take a different shape at the beginning of next year, but I really do think this is a cool thing. Old Mother has Old Mother. I can't even pronounce it. Uh, they've put their faith and their money behind the idea of showcasing a local artist every Tuesday night or a band, a trio, a duo, mm -hmm. whatever, however you want to say it, uh, 
preferably and presumably original music. You're not just going to, as I heard Chris say a thousand times the other day, play Wonderwall over and over. Which is funny because whenever you talk about cover bands, I don't feel like cover bands play Wonderwall anymore, but I feel like that's the one that people always laugh at. You weren't even born when Wonderwall was. Wonderwall. So that does not mean you were born then. No, that just dude, means I, I was de- 1991. Mm-hmm. I was definitely born. You were a year old. Hey Siri, when did Wonderwall come out? I don't. It was like 93. Wonderwall I th- was released in 1995. Eat my ass. Oh, wow, five. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was, anyway, so I was four. the Tuesday things are really cool. It's free. You just go and you can drink if you want. I know that, uh, and it's and it's early. I can appreciate this because I'm old and tired. Seven to nine, I believe, is what it is. Yeah. Seven to nine on Tuesdays, you just go in. You can have a beer. You can check out a new artist. It's sort of like a mini, mini discovery series. I like that a whole lot. I like so, that a whole lot. I hope, I hope, I hope we can continue to do it. Then. Yes, and I hope people will be serious about kind of showing up for those because again, it's on Tuesdays at Old Mother every freaking Tuesday, seven to nine p.m. Again, every single Tuesday is booked from now until twenty twenty three. So um, if you like it. If you're interested, show up because there's nothing more that will get the people going than people going. So, um, Colin, we have one really important, cool thing to kind of talk about. We, we do. Yeah. I, there was there was one thing that I wanted to say, though. About your Bojangles app? I'm very pumped on my Bojangles app. I didn't even app. know there was Bojangles here. But, and I'm. Well, it's in Washington. I mean, it's it's on the other side. It's like southeast. It's, it's of course. down there. Yeah. I can't. I can't do it easily, no, but no, I'm no. going to do it. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to do it. And the thing is, I don't want you to bring me back anything because it won't be good. Uh, don't, don't, okay. don't, don't, don't. Okay, don't. well, fuck you then. No, I, I did want to say this, though, because I thought this was funny. And then Chris can say uh, whatever he was going to say. And from there, we will do we will do our interview with the kids in Marzi Maddox. Now can probably hear that I'm stalling because it sounds like Chris was going to come back. Brett's watching the TV too loud and I have to turn it down. I've had a couple people. I've had a few people um, talk about the Asa episode Ooh, to me. The, the second one? The second one. Did they think you were too drunk too? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to... I want, <laughs> Oh, that's so good. I want okay. I want to take this opportunity to speak directly to anybody mm. who listened to the Ace of Weeks episode where we were interviewing Ace of Weeks, one of the most up and coming rap hip hop superstars in all of Frederick, Maryland and all of Maryland. Sure. I would like to take this opportunity. If I made anybody feel like I had had too much to drink, maybe they felt I should just have never talked or perhaps edited out. I would like to say to you and only you, fuck off. So, <laughs> what did you have to say, Chris? I, I was just excited to tell people um, that Colin's going to start his apology tour uh, starting at the Weinberg on... Uh... Please cancel me. <laughs> Please. You'll make my life a lot easier. Please. So we have... Um, so this episode is coming out... Uh, the 14th? It's coming out the eighth. The eighth. Oh. Yeah. So we have. Uh, so t- so this is coming out on September eighth. So uh, two days from now, September tenth. Again, people, we have a really cool opportunity uh, for booking a new space in Frederick. Uh, it's at the Frederick Arts Council. It's a all ages within twenty four plus to drink uh, venue at the Frederick Arts Council on five East Second Street, and it's Chrome Rodeo, Colin's favorite band. Uh, Frames from Baltimore. <laughs> Uh, Violet Evergreen and Davey Haynes, my favorite band. And it's going to be an awesome time. It's five bucks, six thirty. Um the building is very cool, but capacity is very limited. So if you're gonna get there, get there at six thirty, you may not get in. If not, we have to wait till people leave and then they can usher you in. But like I think the show might also sell out as well, which kinda yeah. is, is exciting but also kind of frustrating all at the same time because I want as many people as I as humanly possible to be able to see yeah, it. I guess show. I'll be there serving drinks. Oh, that is why I set this up because everybody wants to shit on me for being too drunk for a podcast episode, which is part of recording a podcast. Sometimes that happens, and now you can come actually see how grouchy I am in without drinks, yeah, without yeah. drinking, without drinking. And the, this is your opportunity to tell Colin. Actually, 
PSA, folks. This is your opportunity. Anything that common means to you or doesn't mean to you, this is your chance to buy a beer and then tell him everything you feel about him. I'm now sure. it's like a dunk tank, but emotional. Yeah, it's an emotional dunk, ta- dunk tank. Uh, did I hear the? Yeah, doorbell? I think does that mean they're up front? I think so. Why yeah. don't you go? Matt, I'll, you gotta yeah. go around. Go get them, Chris. No, no, we're finishing up here. But this is the thing where you're gonna have a tip jar. You're gonna have all sorts of stuff. I only accept hundreds. Only accept hundreds because you are a classy son of a bitch. And um, anyway, so you're going to be serving beer. I'm going to be hanging around. It's going to be a really good time. September 10th, FAC, uh, Chrome Rodeo, Frames, Violet Evergreen. and It's um, the last show you'll see me at all year. That's not true because you're going to be there on the next Friday at Sky Stage. One of the two, but not both. You're going to be at both because I need you at the second one. You don't. You never I needed me. I always need you. And it's going to be uh, Natalie Brooke, Stitch, Stitch Early. Early, and Kite Wave. And, and it's- here... Right now is Mars Maddox. Always ready. We are here in the Could Be Better studios with I'm Always Ready Matt. <laughs> what's up? And Phoenix from, hey, hey. from Marzi Maddox. Hi. Hey, hey what's guys? up? Hey, how you guys love, doing? I love that Matt, as soon as Matt was here, he's like, yeah, I need a beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I need a beer. Which, right I mean, now. it's Wednesday night. Uh, you guys were teaching lessons at the Rock School tonight, mm-hmm. so it's like, you know. God, after teaching lessons, you gotta have beer. I yeah, just, sometimes, it, definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, like, yeah, how does that go? Like, the, does it? Is that an inspiring thing to work with kids like that? Because I know, like, the, the little, I don't. Why are you laughing? <laughs> they got the, the laugh that? over there, Colin. You can't set them up like that. Honestly. That was a that was a deep drink. Wow. <laughs> yeah. you well, guys, you're like, is that inspiring? Like, work with kids like that? I was like, damn, dude. Like, what do you mean, like, like what? that? My first. Okay, what's your favorite Nickelback song? Thank Let's you. start there. It's obviously Let's an animal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Easy. Instantly. <laughs> Whatever the new one is, that's gonna come yeah. out soon. Dude. Well, <laughs> it's heavy. Right. I know. Did you see the preview? Oh, I was like, God. Now we're having a real conversation about Nickelback. We are. We're excited. Yeah, you had to mention it, man. Let's go back to actually <laughs> doing good things, you know. Uh, so what, what's that like, man? Are you guys, how long have you been doing it at the Rock School? Uh, I think a little, like a year now. Yeah, I'd say about, about a, year. a year. It started off for both of us. It started off as kind of like part-time filling in as subs. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, you know, because we went there as kids. And so, you know, we've always like been connected and have always stayed in touch. And Scott was finally like, hey, you guys ready to come back and teach? And we're like, all right, yeah, yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah, sure. Um, so it started off part time, and then I've been full time now since December. That's awesome. I'm every single day this week. I do a lot of sub work. So <laughs> I literally worked Friday, Saturday. They're closed Sunday. I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday straight Dang. up. So I've That's just cool. been I've been teaching like crazy. But but do you dig it though? Like it's work, but you're doing music. So, so. you guys know me. I've bartended downtown. Right. I've That's served right. downtown. Yeah. I've done yep. all the downtown jobs that mm-hmm. are just you know. Your sleep schedule's messed up. Right. You know, you're drinking a lot because hey, yeah. when, you, when, both, you, when you get off of your shift, <laughs> you're done. You know, all your coworkers are like, "All right, time for shots." Right. That was absolute yeah. insanity. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it's been a really healthy switch for me. Um. You still, oh, you still over at Dublin I, too? No, no. Oh, good just, for you. Just teaching now. That's so cool, it's dude. super rewarding to have a um like a job that's only music based. And then you come in here and we're like, you want a beer? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> shot, shot, shot. Well, what? there's the a normal week, level week of getting awesome. tanked after work, but <laughs> yeah, then yeah, there's the, yeah. Yeah. well, one old mother beer podcast. is delicious, but yes, let's be real. Let's be <laughs> yeah. real. But I mean, but that's cool though. So, I mean, um, do you feel like it's a bit of you guys paying it forward or do you guys feel like it's a bit of you're just paying bills? Oh, oh it's shit. definitely paying it forward. I that's know, awesome. I know for me, like growing up before I even got into music, I hated going to regular school. It was the really? worst thing ever. What school did you go to? I went to Walkersville. Shout out to Walkersville. <laughs> WHS. Nobody burn it down. <laughs> yeah, please no. don't. <laughs> no, but I hated it. I, I, it was awful for me. I, so I could have never, I never would have imagined that I would have taught. I would have mm-hmm. been like, this is horrible. I hate this. I think out of, I don't know how many years you go to school, 12, I think I had two teachers that I liked ever that sucks um and so it it's really been cool to kind of get into this environment i mean the rock school although it's not like a traditional school it was the first time where i was like oh education people that are sure. teachers like this is awesome i really like this for yeah. when i was in high school going there that was literally my second home i ended up going there five days a week that's how stuff. me and phoenix met yeah that's how me and him met yeah we our first band that we were ever in together was was at the rock school what was that first band's name oh my American Roulette. Yes. Shout out Tyler, Brandon, <laughs> Ross, wherever you guys are. <laughs> That's awesome. American Roulette. We're yeah. playing. We didn't come up with that name. Oh, oh. Yeah. who did? Tyler did. Oh, the bassist. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, it was in a smoke session. So you guys know Russian Roulette, but like 
we're in America. So like fuck American yeah. roulette. Fuck yeah. so, so I'm going to start a band called American roulette. Now. Can I take that please? You take it. Go, go Chris, ahead. you ready to start a band yet? Yeah, we'll call it American Roulette. Okay, cool. Yeah, what's, <laughs> so what's the difference in American Roulette and Russian Roulette? Did you guys get that deep? Uh, no, we didn't get that uh, deep. American no. Roulette sucked, and Russian Roulette's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't so, know Matt, let me just make sure you're on the record. Russia is cool, <laughs> and, and, and America is not. Let me make sure I just get that right. Uh, yeah, our, our, our podcast sponsors, uh, Vladimir and uh, uh, War Crimes, is uh, sponsors of this episode. We haven't Absolutely. gotten that check though yet. We haven't gotten that check. That's no, I problem. think it's gonna bounce because I think rupees. I think rupees are doing real bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's funny? Because he said he could pay in crypto, and that's hey. Oh, so. yeah. Anyway. We only demand our checks are in are in rubles. 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 Well, taxes have know. to go through first. Our taxes have to go to that, and then it goes back. To yes, that. yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it's like a laundering scheme, but you know, it's fine. It's clean, yeah. real clean afterwards. Yes. So, you guys, yes. so you guys, when you guys met each other, being because right now, I mean, in my mind at least, you guys are. Marzi Maddox oh, like yeah. you guys are the band the two of you I know you've had a revolving door of drummers over the years and all mm-hmm. that stuff but I feel like you guys are sort of the brain child yeah. the brain children of it did you connect musically right away was that something mm-hmm. that you guys knew you'd be good with together I know from my perspective at least I can't speak for you I know when we were in that band American Roulette together at the age of 14 15 I know that out of all the members I felt connected to Matt, like, oh, I talked to this guy. You know, he came to my 15th birthday party when I'd only known him for like two months. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. And I remember, new, like, that band had broken up. I'd gone on to do other things. And I remember numerous times me and Matt kind of reconnecting and being like, we should do something. And then it, it never happened. But mm. then I had started Marzy Maddox with a couple, and I'd started that, and I had a couple other guys. And one of my best friends at the time, uh, you were dating her. And that was kind of yeah. how then we finally, at Ooh. like, we were like 17, Ooh. 18. We kind of reconnected because, like, I was always over at her house hanging out for parties. He was there. It was like, oh, Matt, what's up, dude? And because of her, the two of them would come out to our shows all the time. Sure. And I remember at one point like being you're like. taking me to another Marzi Maddox show? <laughs> <laughs> Kill me, dude. I don't want to listen to this record one more time. It's amazing. <laughs> then it's Phoenix like, comes off stage. Fuck. Matt, this, I'm this. really sick of our like. I'm sick of this. Yeah, I really, I, I would really like you to be the guitar player. And I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely, I'll be the yeah, guitar player. I remember <laughs> we were at we were at Metro Gallery. It was right before Thanksgiving. Hell yeah. And I remember being having issues with one, one of the band members and kind of being like, all right, he's he's not going to be in the band anymore. Yeah. And at that time, that I was, was me. <laughs> was it you? Kicked me out. I kicked you out. Yeah, it was a different Colin that we kicked out, but that comes later. <laughs> yeah, that comes later. That comes afterwards. That was Matt's decision. We got to kick this guy out. <laughs> that like, was when. That was the moment that Matt was officially a member. Was when he was like, "We got to kick our drummer out, bro." I was like, yeah, "You're right. That's awesome." Yep. I said, "I'm gonna go start a podcast." God damn. <laughs> um, did you guys go to the crate place in at, when you, uh, across the street on Charles Street at the Metro Gallery? No, we didn't. So next time you play, because Metro Gallery is awesome. Love yeah, that place. Love, love that venue. Great, that's um, kind of new. That's been around Metro for Metro Gallery, aren't they? No, done? no, no, no. Metro Gallery has been around forever, but the Crate Place. <clears throat> oh, I mean, it's been there since since Stoke Lady days, because because we we we, pl- it, okay. we we would play and we go across the street and get it, and it was, they had a Reuben well, Crepe. Kick me out of the band. I went. <laughs> I'm able to start a podcast. That's instead. two bands I've been kicked out of. In a matter of <laughs> but that's cool though. It's kind of like fate, and and it's almost yeah. kind of like Matt. You just, I mean, did you think twice about it? Were you just like, oh, let's just uh, do it? I didn't think twice. No, that's I awesome. Mean, I had just, I just be. I had just graduated high school. Phoenix is like super smart, so he graduated super early. Sure. But <laughs> I had just graduated high school, and I was like, "Well, I'm not going to college, and I need to, I need to start a band or like find <laughs> yeah. a band." Yeah. So I was a little bit like, "I need to like pursue music on like a new level and like mm-hmm. actually get creative with someone." But every single project that I try to start, like everyone was like, "Oh, I'm going to college, or I'm going to school, or I'm really? doing this," and then Phoenix hits me up, and I'm like, "Yes." There was nobody who was like, yeah. "I'm I'm really into wanting to do a band full time." <laughs> nobody outside of Phoenix. They would be like, "Oh, I would love to," or I had like two or three bands that like were in the works, but we would always go to like actually play a show, and they'd be like, "Oh no, I'm going to school, or I'm doing this." Huh. Yeah, I mean, you just graduated high school. All your yeah. friends are either going to school or like not focusing on music at that right. time. You know? Yeah, and, but was a lot of that. A lot of those friends from school, a lot of those friends from the rock school. Both school and the rock school. Huh. Yeah. It's like a mixed bag. I remember, too, because trying to find guys to play with. I mean, literally everybody that was ever in the band has been a rock school, like, huh. had been at the rock school. Because, like, yeah. 
trying to find people at that age, like it was so difficult to find people that wanted to actually play. Like they'd yeah. be like, I mean, shit, I still have a friend that I joke around with about, Hey, remember when we were 14, we were going to start a band and we never did. Yeah. And cause so many people was like, yeah, let's start a band. And then you go to try to get together and like actually practice. And it's, it never worked. It yeah. like never happened. It's also weird when you're trying to be in a band and try to get people to actually practice. <laughs> Yep. Why are you looking at this direction? <laughs> That's why, why we still it? don't have a bassist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but your well, bassist wanna, is super tight right now. Well, wait oh, a second, yeah. though. I want I want to talk about that first yeah. of all. Let's get to the first music break. Which song do you want to hear first? What do you want the people to hear, and why? You want me to answer this? Say "Brand New Day," and why is that? Uh, well, one, it was the first single off the album, and I think it just it's off the a, new album, off the new album, okay. newest album, year old now. But uh, it it really encapsulate encapsulates our current sound and kind of where where we're progressing and heading. Yeah. So this is brand new day mm-hmm. from Marzi Madness.
you sound. And it's from the Copper Oaks album, correct? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. I still think of uh, Phoenix, your mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she. Hey now. She, <laughs> yeah, I was, gonna, I was waiting. Uh, I was waiting for Matt. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I know we're on a podcast, yeah, so I held back so, that. I think of Phoenix's so, mom all the time. So, so we. Somebody opens up him. a podcast and says, "I'm thinking of." Your mom. <laughs> well, it's funny because uh, so she uh, uh, bartended at Monocacy Brewery. For yeah. That, so, so I saw her a bunch. She's like, "Oh yeah, you're Chris Perry." I was like, "Hi." She's like, you know, so anyway, so Clarissa and I are tight. Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> and so, What's her name? Cl- uh, Clarissa. You know her name? Yeah. Why, why is that weird? Best bartender in town. I Listen, believe that. It's I true. That. She, she's awesome. Yeah, it was okay. great. This and, is at Monocacy? Yeah, Monocacy Brewing Company. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. If I ever left this room. No, no, no. Well, I mean, you're, you're always just working um, here at the studio. So That's it's like it's, true. It's tough. Here at the studio. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a tough What were you going to ask? Anyway, so the, the thing was um, we had a could be better flyer. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I remember we we took out all the dates of the flyer and just used the background as like a Facebook header. <clears throat> and remember, your mom commented on Facebook because moms on Facebook are hysterical. Shout out, mom, uh, my mom. <clears throat> but and she, but it's like the there was like leaves on it, and there were oak leaves, and she goes, "Oh, copper oaks." And so now every time I think of like uh, uh, Marzi Maddox's last record, Copper Oaks, which you can find on streaming platforms everywhere, I think of your mom. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Including Russia, you can find it on streaming platforms. Yeah, you, yeah, da 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 da. So I think I, I think with like CD Baby the service I think it does get you on like some Russian I, yeah, or I, I mean so. maybe not I'm not very last fluent time I in, checked in our Spotify artist base it was that we had quite a few streams from so, Russia uh, okay and Putin was the last name yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, how often do you check those I'd say nah. like once once every week or so. Do you really? really? Yeah, That's a really I good idea. I, I pre- you and I should be in a band together. That'd be great because we'd be so neurotic. You'd check it once a week. I'd check it the other parts of the week that you don't check it. Yeah. And then it'd be like. <laughs> the other six days. Cycle off. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like, oh, fuck. We only yeah. have 50 streams. Yeah. <laughs> What's right. going on? We didn't put out new music. Yeah. Because it's, it's so interesting. It's like, because I mean, I do the same thing with podcast analytics and stuff like that. I'm always interested to say. Like, and who's you never listening? tell me anything because you know I'm going to flip out. Yes. Because it's. That's so, why I don't look. Yeah. Because the, the <laughs> I just num- have him do it. The number is so high. That's why I don't like, like, I want to get to your head. And I would come up to Phoenix and be like, we're in 56 different countries. I didn't even know there was 56 different <laughs> countries. <laughs> that's amazing. And uh, that's why you took the full four years to finish high school. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, there's more than 50 countries? I, didn't I, know. I don't know. So I want to I wanna get into this a little bit because I, I was in a band once that had two people in it and there was guitar and drums. Hmm. And you guys decided to have double guitars Mm-hmm. And drums, yeah, and mm-hmm. but you played bass for a little bit though. Yeah, yeah you did. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. You, you I always string. knew that you. Were, and then like one day I saw you guys. I don't remember where it was. Mm-hmm. I think it was one of our oh, shows. Yeah, it, it would have been the one we did at New Spire. Yes. No. Yeah. Well, it was either New Spire or it was Old Mother. Because so, so Colin comes to shows once a yeah, quarter. Double oh, it was. It was. It was <laughs> okay. Yep. That's so what that, it was. That it was the Old sense. Mother one. Yeah. Because I. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. And so room, like I said, I don't leave. But I saw you guys, and I was like. Wait, he's playing a guitar. He's playing a guitar. And that was so different from what I had seen before. And there's no tuning pegs. What the fuck? Right. I was was pumped, though. I was like, wow, this is ballsy as fuck. This is great, dude. So, like, how did you guys come to that conclusion? Like, we're going to get rid of having a live bass guitar. I think that was all a product of not having a drummer and then adjusting uh from there. So we got really used to the idea of just me and Matt being on stage and being okay with it because Mm -hmm. after we had had gotten rid of our old drummer, we tried to find another one. And Mm. one of the big reasons for for us getting rid of that drummer besides just like personal stuff was that we wanted to kind of keep progressing in more of like the technical Mm proggy elements that we were doing. And our... The drum at the time was not keeping up with where me and Matt wanted to go, and so we're like, we're gonna part ways. Ooh, shade there. <laughs> could, shade. Could, oh, yeah. Couldn't play. Oh, we, said, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Matt, I have. It's so funny. Mostly shade between now. Well, yeah. it's funny because I have more personal reasons to be mad with this guy, sure. but he hates him more than I do. I, I'll be like, ah, we're cool. I don't really care. And Matt's like, no, screw him. If I see him, I'm gonna hit him with a bus. I'm like, sure. Whoa. So, okay. okay. Cheers, what, so, so, so yeah, cheers, like, like personal yeah. thing, or just like just not I'm a good drummer. No, he was a good drummer. It was, was just great. like it's that thing of 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 he stopped working. It was I'm okay with where I'm at, and I don't really care to mm, progress more. And me and sure. Matt are the me and Matt are just the type of guys where we're constantly wanting to get better. Sure, you know, just for the sake we just enjoy that. And it's yeah. not a like a, a judgment that one one's better than the others. It's just how we like to work. And so, we, I think it was like a year and a half we didn't have a drummer. We auditioned like. 
20 different guys. We were putting up flyers at FCC, Hood College, let's, the music stores. Let's be let's be fair, though, because and I was just criticized for cutting people off, so I apologize for that. Yeah. <laughs> now we're cool. going to be But in my head. let me tell you what I want to ask. <laughs> well, when you... Now you so have the for the for that. Well. Yeah, that's right. It's our podcast. We're cold. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> and your shoes suck. Damn. So anyway, <laughs> uh, the thing was with coming out of that album because I remember you had the other drummer. Mm-hmm. Then, but the next album you had who you had a a noop sass. You had a noop and a noop. Anybody going to step to a noob? Nobody's going to step that was to the a noob. And that brings us to Andy. And that brings us to Andy. So, but, but real quick, so we had a noob's tracks that we had been working on this album. And so we had gotten like show offers to play with some of our favorite bands like Amorosa, a lot like Birds. And we're like, me and Matt looked at each other like, yo, we're being offered to play these shows. Like, backtrack. Screw it. Let's do yeah. it. Let's go. You and me, like, we're going to go up and we're going to do this. And Did so you play to backtrack We drums, played to really? backtrack oh, yeah. drums. Oh, shit. Wow. And wow. With the bass player or just you two? Uh, I was playing bass at the time, so I played bass okay. because that album, the one that Anoop was on, we still wrote that with the mind of one guitar player. All the sure. parts on that album are, are one guitar part. Yeah. That uh-huh. was kind of our philosophy at the time. That's and so crazy, we dude. went up, we played with drum with tracks. We did drums? like We did like four shows like that, and every single time people were like, that was awesome. Huh. Yeah, so the response no was 100%. That was killer. You guys have balls for doing that. Wow. Yeah. Um, That's it, it, not even... Uh, I, you could give me 100 tries to... Do, there's no, no chance way. in hell. I mean, did you have a click in your ear? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we the have, first time, in-ears. actually... The first time we set up, um, we split it where we had the drums go into front of house and we had a hi hat go into our monitors because we didn't have in ears at the time. <laughs> yeah, so we didn't do that one. Because we wanted to kind of keep it. it though. We, we were like, we didn't want to do the yeah. clip We're like, let's just do a hi hat like like a natural oh, drummer yeah, would do. Yeah, yeah. I want to so, see. Is there video of these shows? Oh yeah, there's one. There's back somewhere. in the yeah. back in the day where it was like, yeah, sure, Phoenix, I can play rhythm, lead, and sing at the same time, no <laughs> yeah. problem. And he's like, you can do it. I believe in you, man. I did, and, and you're yeah. doing it great. That's the only reason I was able to do it. <laughs> Dude, so, so like shows were at like we're probably so you said Emerald. So and all like birds. I'm thinking six eleven, right? Uh, so we did uh, the champ six eleven chameleon club. Um, so great sound systems, not great sound systems. Wow. Like and uh, dude, the champ. Have you, do you know about the champ? Don't know. About I miss it. it. No. Best so the, part about the champ is when you start playing loud, the paint chips from the ceiling start that's falling right. yeah. off yeah. the ceiling. So the, so you breathe them in. You're like, yeah. oh, it's amazing. So the champ is on Lemoyne, uh, Pennsylvania. It's like under a bridge and like an overpass. It's, it's so rock and it's roll. It's cool. Yeah. It's gone though. Yeah, it's but um, gone. everything's I'm gone. Upset. Wow. Then we found Andy, and we, we we found Andy. Actually, I was playing with another group that I, I frequently play with, and I met him Sh- at this show. Shout out. Who's the big? Uh, Raven, Raven Tree is the group that I play with. Um, And so we were at this show. It was like St. Patrick's Day. I remember being like really hungover, being like, I don't want to go do this. I got to drive to the middle of nowhere, like Maryland. Right. And I see this guy playing, and I'm like, I see he's like the way that Andy still is to this day, meticulously setting up his minor symbols yes. and his Tama drum kit. And I'm seeing this guy, and he goes to play with his band, and like, no offense to his band at the time, but I was like, yo, I think this guy can do more than what he's being allowed to do right, in this. Yeah. So I started chit-chatting with him, and I start listing off bands that I like, and he's like, I love that band. Hmm. I love that band. I love this band. I'm like, so why are you playing that music? He's like, well, I didn't know other people liked this kind of music. And so I sent him our <laughs> album with a noop, and like that was one of the big selling points for him was like, a noop played on your album? Yo, if you if you <laughs> if you get a record in your hand that has a noop playing on it, and you say, okay, I'll learn this, and then you learn it, and then you go fucking play it out. Yeah. He, that's it. That's it. Like you he hire made us him feel like tonight. We, need to practice. You he, hire him. we we gave him the record. A week later, he shows up to rehearsal, plays the entire thing flawlessly, flawlessly. no questions, uh, with a click like track, him. with a click track. He had never played to a click track live before. Like he practiced with one, Good but we him. said, "Hey, we've got in ears. This is what we do." And so we're like, "You want to try?" It? He's like, "Sure." Nailed it. Played that's the entire awesome. album yeah, the first time through, and we're like, it. Sure. "Remember, it was you mid practice." Me and Phoenix both look at each other mid song, and we go. We need to practice. And that was <laughs> yeah. a great feeling because right. for years oh, it was man. always like you guys were we, driving we, it. Yeah, and so it right. was awesome. Like, and that's the thing that's about great, like the, the the group that we have now, and why we decided to finally get to your yeah. question about we, we decided that our music took up the whole second segment. So I this know, is good. perfect. <laughs> but it was like we decided we're like we had written all these albums with one guitar in mind, and we're like, mm-hmm. you know what? We did the backtrack thing before. Honestly, every show we play at, you can't hear the bass anyways. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I love bass. I would still go back and play it, but. Uh, you know, we're like, man, it's not as integral as what we want to do with writing two guitar parts. Wait, now. so you don't pedal the bass at all? There's no, there's none of that. It's just two guitars and drums. No, there is bass. It yeah, goes okay. through a live cab. So it's stuff okay. that I recorded. That's so I, I, thinking, I still record right. all the bass parts. Di through And then we just cab. di it yeah. through our live okay. cl- live cab because it gives it a good feel. Yeah. So yeah. it's essentially um, like like it was when you guys were just playing YouTube. 
with a track with drums with a click. Mm-hmm. Now you have drums, but track with a click for the bass. bass. Yeah. Yep. And, that's, um, and that's pretty much it. And we're always open to the idea of, of, of having a live bass player. It's just finally after all these years, we've got the three of us that are so connected and so glued. Yeah. Like I feel like Matt makes me want to be a guitar, better guitar player. Andy makes me want to be a better musician. And it's this this whole circle of like, Everyone's kind of constantly pushing each other in a good way. You know, we yeah. had we had Kenny on last week yep. or two weeks ago, and uh, you know, I don't know if you guys know about time columns and you yeah. oh yeah time columns oh, yeah. and all that. And they've gone back to being a two piece band, drums. Oh, okay, and, and because again, they're just going to program the bass and they're just going to mm-hmm. do that, or or they just won't do the bass like they did back in the day, right? Yeah, and and there's so much to be said for that especially when it comes to the type of music you guys do mm-hmm. and the type of music they do. Mm-hmm. Can you even imagine being in that band, Chris? Oh, no, it'd be awful. <laughs> 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 no, because I think it's like it's so tough because it's like when it's been a two-piece, I think it's a little in- in- intimidating coming into it when there's like there's people that are tight mm-hmm. and then someone else kind of comes players, in. Good players, though. Good it, players. Like amazing you cannot players. fuck around. If you are no, a bad player, you, you're not welcome. 100%. And the know? thing is <laughs> that, that's like and like not smoke, blowing smoke, but it's like you guys are amazing guitar players. Like Matt, like your guitar playing is incredible. And, 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 and like Steven and, like, and Phoenix, are like it was so crazy where it's like. called you Steven. I, I was thinking Steven. <laughs> I like I it. Like, that's my new nickname. Yes. Yeah. Steven. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> Steven. Uh, better, than, better than the nicknames he gives me. But it's like like Phoenix, like you're going from bass to guitar too. It's like you're still mostly rhythm, but like you're still kind of doing some cool like intricate picking things doing some mm-hmm. cool leads and some cool guitar harmonies and it's like it's cool i would feel super intimidated if i was a drummer like andy coming in and being like oh sure i know my right. shit yeah. but then also just being like oh no no no, i'm now like a third wheel in between like Ooh, so, uh, a bromance I see what you're saying. and that, that <laughs> <laughs> yeah honestly the second andy joined the both of me and phoenix's affections went straight to him that's awesome <laughs> yeah we're both like i love him more and he's like no, no i, I know, love, I him, love more. him more <laughs> and now now we just try our best to make him as un- uncomfortable as possible that's right that's all right. the time because because uh, andy is a man of many words <laughs> yeah oh okay By so this way, is he's here tonight you just haven't heard him. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. i asked it, this, this this perfectly so he was joking when he said this but this is andy right here man yeah. of many words it's like handy we're, we got the podcast like you know you know you can't make it and you, you know would you have any words you want us to share and he's like yeah fuck off that's right and that was it that's that was right. it that's a perfect segue to the second song so which <laughs> what is the second you song go. you guys so wanted to actually hear? this is probably one of our biggest supporters one of our biggest our friends that is, has been there for us a lot uh Suli and his band Marshall Fuzz. Mm-hmm. Coach um, Suli definitely puts him respect on that. You guys know Suli. Yes. Everyone yeah, knows wait, we Suli. We should probably get him on. Well, yeah. of course. He, oh, yeah. He's nice. done, uh, other other than you, other than both of you, actually, you guys have both since day one have been like big supporters of our band. Fuck, I was given writing shows. about your music like you, eight years ago. I know, ago, when man. we were kids. <laughs> when we were kids, I think the first one, I think we were... 16, 17, when you were writing about it. And, you know, you've been there with oh, your Chris bands and be, putting, putting Bullshit. shows on. Yeah. Um, but, so I'd have Damn, to give another credit to, oh. to Suli. Yeah. Suli's been there and has given us advice. He's been really helpful for me in, in diving into the studio world and being supporting with me on that. Um, so this is a song that we did together. This is their song, uh, I've Been Down. <laughs>
Coach Suli. I love this song. Um, yeah, we have to get Suli on. Yeah, you have to get Suli. So, yes. so, so there, it's Suli's got a story for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and um, hearing his brand of positivity is really encouraging. Um, but then also um, hearing the song too is kind of that mantra. It's like you know, I've been down, you know, um, but I'm not out kind of thing. It's mm-hmm. like, oh damn, like hey, like he's got it. And like even when they play it live, it's like you still get kind of chills. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, Except, and Sully has been kind of posting about this a bunch on Facebook, so I'll bust his ass a little bit on this, but it's like, that guy needs to get a bigger amp. And he knows uh, it. Yeah. He knows it. But I, I've been riding him hard since they played the, oh, is that a sick double motorcycle show at the Eagles upstairs? Uh, uh, <laughs> Marshall, I hope the video feed got yeah, that. I that's right. got that. <laughs> yeah, and Mar- Marshall Fuzz played, and I was like, Sully, I love you, man, but you need to get a bigger amp. This isn't, this isn't gotten. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, I can't hear shit. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I'll turn it up. Not good, not, like not good yeah. enough, man. It's like literally like the size of like the speakers in your Mac right now. It's you trash. Know, yeah, me and him have talked. He's been asking me and Matt like, what should I get? And we've been trying to gear him towards the direction. Like, yo, you need some wattage. Yeah, right? I, I told him. Guitar. I told him. I was like, dude, you're Marshall Fuzz. You should get a Marshall tube. He amp. should It'd work perfectly. Mm-hmm. And right. he goes, oh, I have one. Yeah, he had one. He's supposed to like, getting a retube <laughs> or something. What? I know. I know. It's like, come on, dude. Listen. Yeah. Is it getting to the point where we think Suli is sort of the center of Frederick music right now? It seems like he knows everybody. Well, I mean, he, he's 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 the downtown persona. But know? he'll play. He'll play. Like, and this is, you know what? This is the thing, too. And I'll get your opinion on this. <laughs> this might have even been something way back when I was doing the playlist stuff. The when we did, a, I think we did a podcast together. Yeah. I yeah. We came, we went to some college that you were at, I think. Well, we did a couple college? things with you. We did. Well, yeah, we did a bunch of things. Yeah, but I don't in Virginia. Colleges. Yeah, no, I remember one thing. We were in like the basement of the warehouse of of the playlist. It was with our old drummer, and he threw out that I hate Prince. Yeah, right and you got Prince really died. mad at him, and you were like, "Well, there goes all of our viewers." <laughs> it Wait. was like a day after Prince died. He's like, oh, "I hate Prince." And you Whoa, were like, excuse that was very me? that that did happen. I yeah, yeah. you yeah. got like yeah. I thought you were gonna kick us out for a second. Well, <laughs> I was I mean, the day punch him in the face. The day after somebody dies, you don't do it. Sound like oh, David Bowie is overrated. What? Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. We were ready to kick him out of the band. Oh, no. We were like, whoa! <laughs> he didn't just say, I didn't like Prince. He said, I hate Prince. I'm glad he's dead. Uh, it was yeah. like three, I do remember three minutes that. afterwards. Yeah. And we're, oh, it just got rain. quiet for like five seconds. And then you go, there goes all of our listeners. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck says that? That who guy says, says that. That, that guy. No longer in the band. Yeah, well, not here. No today. longer in the band guy says that. But we're, we're, when, when, it comes to, when it comes to playing in Frederick, for mm-hmm. instance... Do you guys want to play as much as possible? And the reason that it, that I ask this and and uh, hold your answer until I get okay. through this because it's, right? it's, it's a long ramp up. It's a long ramp up. It's a long ramp up. Yeah. Well, well, the thing is, Suli does that, mm-hmm. and I admire that. I I subscribe to that. Like Suli will go play with Tad at Sky Stage and play with Marshall Fuzz at Nola that mm-hmm. same night, and then go down at Bushwallers and plug in there, and then play Cellar Door with Brady, and then go someplace. I mean, it's just, right. it doesn't and then after stop. that, he's on the street, just and like playing. Live. And that's what. So again, like I was a few years ago, and I just ran into the the teacher who asked me to do this to come talk to her class, high school class. Because they wanted to learn about playing music out and stuff. I said, play as much as you can. I believe that. Play as much as you can. Chris, on the other hand, hard pass. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like there's so there's a point of like if you're trying to hone your craft, which I think is what you're really talking about. No, you need to get in front of people. Uh, you do. I, I disagree. So, it's, so I mean, like, 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 like for me, he was it, homeschooled. I was homeschooled. So it's like, so I have an opinion of like, you know, uh, so okay, and we're, we're, regardless of the homeschool dick. So, I think, yeah, no, I'm fucked. Uh, yeah, 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 that doesn't no, mean anything. No, 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 but I'm just saying. Anything. But but, but <laughs> like, for, for me though, it's like I get to the point of like so. So Colin and I come from different schools, and so Colin's like, <laughs> I will play as much as I can wherever yes. I can, no matter what. Someone offers us a show. That. Yes, right. I'll do it. It's hey, the Colin, same thing with writing too. But, but I fuck say off this. though. You say you say I'm going to play a show, and it's like 5:30 p.m. And you're like, okay, cool, I'll do it. And then you'll get another offer for the same fucking day at 7 p.m. And you're like, well, our set's an hour long, so it's like I'm going to play right. the show. Then I'm going to post all that. my stuff, yeah. and then you'll say mm-hmm. yes. And then someone yeah. else will ask you, hey, you want to play another show? And you're like, well, it's 10 p.m. You'll do three shows at five, at seven, and at 10. And then you're like, oh, it's awesome. You know, it, it, we'll just do it. And then you do it. And then what sucks? You're gonna is, get me in trouble with uh-huh. somebody. And then the next, fuck you and, for that. Yes. And then the next day you'll be like, oh, that's fucking terrible. And I'm like, yeah, that's terrible. I could have told you that. But then what sucks though is you will never say no, which I will appreciate because I like asking you things and I like it when you say yes. Number one. <laughs> number two though, for me personally, it's like 
I have always been of, and maybe I don't understand you because it's like, um, and sorry, sorry guys. This is like couples <laughs> therapy right here. I'm, I'm loving this. Um, but, this but, is fucking therapy. But, but this I'm is like, it. by the way, fuck you, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> this is why. Like, all right, hold on. Let's hear each other's perspectives <laughs> yeah. now. Let's why, calm but, down. But, why don't you talk to our guests? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> I'll finish this off. But it's like, maybe I don't understand it because it's like, for me, it's like, I'm a promoter of shows and I host shows and I put like my balls on the line for things of like, and I'll pay for venues to do things, to do shows. And it's like, if the shows need to do well, I want to pay bands, all this stuff. You do that too though. And you're not in a city position where you have money that doesn't really matter. Like you actually have skin in the game with stuff. Yeah, and, I have no and, money. And, and I don't understand. I don't understand where it's like. Isn't that all why we're here right now? Boom! <laughs> money, 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 money. Yeah, we're. At, you guys are getting paid to be on here, actually. Um, but it's Sponsor, like sponsors, sponsors, and I'm sheets, not, cards. Dude, oh god! If we get sheets, we're sponsored by Old Mother. <laughs> that's right. That's right. right. I wish. But it's like I, I'm not sure where that comes from with you, where you're like, I know you know there's like the business side of it too, but well, it's almost like when you play out a bunch, like you still don't care. Well, okay. So let me just retort that for one second and then actually let our guests talk <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, yeah, at yeah. some point in this final segment of this episode. But it's not like the money has nothing to do with it at all. To me, I, I very much, very, very much subscribe to set up my drums, play every day, get better. If I just play, if I just play, I'll get better. It's the same thing with writing, you know? Like, I've been reviewing records for 15, 20 years now at this point. But you don't been... listen to music. What's that? Yeah, but you don't listen to music. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and I, I also, I, I review wrestling. That's why that's on the TV out there. I do, I've do. i been doing that for the last year, year and a half. Mm-hmm. And that's just a new challenge. So to me, it's just like work, 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 yeah. try to get better. All of this yes. that we were talking about. <laughs> Where do you guys stand? Are you guys like, let's play, play, play? Or are you like with Chris? It's and, like, and let me defend my stance just one more time because I think it's interesting because there has been many shows because I played in the band with this fucker for a year ish, and you there, just proved and, so and, much and, shit. And, and there are yeah. and there are so many shows where it's like they would leave us. Hey, Colin, did you get the check? No, I didn't. I'm like Colin, like you know, <laughs> like we gotta buy merch, we gotta buy shirts. Uh, nah, it's fine. We'll figure it out. No, we needed that check. We turn around. Don't need we, the check. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just wanted to play. Yeah, I just wanted to play, dude. Yeah, I, I, know, that, I know. That's where he's going. Like, I just yeah. wanted to play. Yeah, like, yeah. and we played music, some shows. Yeah. We actually the best version of Double Motorcycle, and you know this was with you, no. as you sit on the therapist couch. Um, <laughs> and it was because like we those were the best shows. We played to the, the best. Part, the pie shop. You guys talked about mm-hmm. the pie shop. Yeah, pie shop. That's I love that place. Great place, dude. The green rooms, the pies, everything. The pies, the free pie you get for playing. Everybody there was like and so welcoming. Like the sound it is was, so cool. The sound is amazing. Honestly, like probably one of the best on stage monitoring setups with the the monitors at face level. That's like cool. the engineer there was great. Yes, um, oh, everybody was fantastic. There. Yes, but so back to the question. And, and really, I, what I, was I, the and, question? And I, I will defend this thing too, where it's like with putting on shows, with trying to play out smart. It's like I saw bands that will play, and there's bands even today that will do it. I won't name names, but you guys know who they are. They'll play NOLA every single weekend, mm-hmm. and then eventually it's like- Samuel the, Powers. Samuel Powers, and they I will... didn't run sound at NOLA. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so it's like they'll play NOLA every weekend, and they will uh, book the same show, book the same bands, and eventually they'll start to get shitty. Mm-hmm. And they get shitty with, oh, well, Frederick fucking sucks. Um, the, you know, People don't come out to shows anymore. I'm like, well, you're running the scene dry. You're booking the same show. You're playing mm-hmm. the same songs, and you're not doing anything different. Why do you exist? And Why do you expect people to keep want to come out? Yeah, yeah. when when it's like, oh well, it's, it's music. People should just want to come. Like, well, yeah, but like you're not giving them anything new. So, so, so are you so, precious so, about the dates you play, right? That's the question. Yes. Yeah. That's, are you precious about the dates you play? What's your answer on that? So my answer on that to start would would definitely be I'd say we we used to be a lot more towards Colin's side on the way of picking yeah. up picking up as much shows as possible. <laughs> Wait for the big butt. But as no! we, as we progressed. We started being a lot more selective with our shows, yeah. and we noticed so much more progress with that. Mm. More people would be coming to shows because we haven't sure. had one and in I'll, a while. And I'll also and I'll let Phoenix take the lead for now too? on because yeah. uh, he's the one that helped me realize so that. I'll say, thank you, Matt. I do have a pushback. I'll, go ahead, I, Phoenix. So go ahead. I play in a bunch of different groups. Right. I've been yeah. able to kind of. I've been very fortunate in that. Like I get paid to pay in a bunch of different right. groups and yeah. so i play a lot i play every weekend i probably played every almost every weekend like e- except for the pandemic year like for the last four or five years with different groups sure going all over the place so i completely understand that you know, if i'm getting paid and i don't want to drive i'm driving everywhere and stuff like that like i'll do it because i love to play 
Um, since I've been doing this nonstop since I was like 14, I'm getting a little not burned out, but like I we at least with Marzi, we've definitely like Matt said, we're trying to pick more of what we want to do because we're kind of we're over just the playing to play. Like we enjoy playing live, we love playing our music, but for us, we like to really be more creative. So we've been focusing a lot more on writing. And we have, like Matt, exactly like Matt said, we've noticed that we've started to finally find some bands that we really click with, that our fan bases meld, and we're like, oh, mm. this is really cool. Let's not, let's not blow this. Let's just kind, of, let's try to build this a little bit more and be more selective with our shows. And also, you know, Andy, you know, Andy's been doing it forever, and he comes from DC, so he's kind of like, I don't want to bring my drum kit and do all the setup yep. just to play in front of right. like two it's people also a matter of being on a show where no one cares. Right. You yeah. know? Well, and, and that's the advertising part of it too, where it's yeah. like, I mean, if, if you're factoring that in, it's like, it does make a difference. If you have two shows in the same week, both are in Frederick. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, some people might make one and some people might make the other. But if you choose just one of those shows, chances are a lot of those people are going to be able to go to that one show. Yeah, like we did our, our last like... I mean, we did. We just did a show at six eleven that we we were gonna do. It was because it was gonna be a friends band of ours, uh, their single release. We booked it. They ended up dropping off the show due wow. to personal issues. So we got kind of we got kind of locked into that one. We're like crap. Well, um, we, it was still fun though. We had a lot of fun. Sure. Uh, it, it was it was well put on. But uh, our last like big Frederick show was at Glory Donuts, and we played with a couple sure. of our friends bands, Gatwick, Flight Away. And that was awesome. We had done, we had played that. We had done a Halloween show with them, and it was killer. And so we've kind of found working with them. They're they're rock school associated. Like we have a lot of similar friends, and then other people. So it was like whoa. Like Laura Jones was packed. We had a mosh pit going on in there. Yeah, like it was crazy. Um, so it was like we really like we've been talking with them about like we should like keep doing stuff together. Um, Mm because it was like we found like oh wow, it's been really hard for us to try to find bands that work. That, that work and not just like oh we like playing with them because there are tons of bands that we love playing with that we enjoy talking to but our fan bases just don't don't mesh together and for whatever reason with the with this crew we all really it, it works well so there's something that is lost in the question uh between chris's response phoenix's response steven's response steven, steven yes. oh that's right steven and steven, steven right? johnson it's two, it's two steven steven square <laughs> We were talking about Suli when we started yes, this conversation. We Let's bring it back to Suli. Well, no, because there's there this is, is all your value. Fault really <laughs> start the podcast. There's value and there's benefit in saying I will play. I'm just going to go play, and Suli does that. Yeah, I know that he plays with a lot of different people and goes out and does a lot of different things because he's just going to play. Mm-hmm. Now the argument, you know, you're going to push back and say, "Well, I'm doing this project and I'm only doing one project that I want to push," mm-hmm. but the same time you could also sort of have his identity you know like when he's out there and when people say suli you know what's kind of a brand in and of himself right way and he's done he's built that for himself and And that way you know you hear oh suli's playing you probably know it's gonna you know it's probably gonna be good because suli plays with all these different right right so exactly right he is kind of his own iconic identity outside of his own band he's got this and, and identity and, and so I, I think that's really i think that is a cool thing yeah and i think it's I, I wonder if i mean obviously now we have to get him on the podcast right we've talked about oh, it yeah. his, his ears are burning but it's like <laughs> he I, but, keeps he says he's not gonna come well i mean he's i get like, it I, I wouldn't either but it's like but it seemed <clears> like <throat> kind of half heard voices but go hey oh what <laughs> um so at, so at, at this point though I just, Julie, did a, I just did a little solo challenge for half heard voices <laughs> it was fun it's funny because we also did a solo challenge with half heard voices so in terms great. of Having to do an entire podcast when they ghosted us today. Did I say that out loud? Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, shit. Who's listening? I'm sorry. Nobody. But anyway, but like with that with Suli, it's like I don't think he – my guess is it's not intentional that that's him trying to be his brand. That's just him being him. It's just him. It's just genuine. He just loves to play. Yeah. And And that's – That's my point, man. If I love to play, if I want to go play like five nights a week – I think that's just as good for playing in front, you know? And like, I think it works because you're genuine in that. You're doing it just because you love to play and that comes across. And so I think it yeah. works. Whereas I think uh, if you if you come from me and more like you and me's perspective of we do think uh, a little bit more about the business of drawing people not in. Not just you and me. Yeah, you I was going to say, where's you Matt? Matt, 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 Matt you with me or him? And Which I one? I felt, <laughs> <laughs> I felt that Matt definitely gave a little more in the middle. Kind of like, oh, I see your point, Colin. Oh, no, 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 like, no, no, no. Matt, Matt are you with me? I'm not with me. No, everybody said, fuck Colin. We're all with Chris and that your way of thinking is dumb. 
But I think, yeah, I think if you're just doing it for the love of doing it, it comes across, and I think it doesn't. I don't think it affects the 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 fans or the market's perspective sure. on you because I think it, you just you're coming across as a genuine person. Like this yeah. person just loves to play music, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think all of us will agree. Like when you're when you go to see your favorite band, or you go to see anybody, even somebody you don't know. If you see the people on stage are engaged and having fun, yeah. Even if it's not your favorite type of music, you get into it because you're just like this person's doing. It. And Suli does that no matter what he's playing. And, and I can so also like makes you want to follow him. I can wrap wrap the question up too with. With social media, from uh, a social media standpoint, worst. when you're advertising a show, you want to be focused on this one show that yep. you're advertising. For instance, the last show that we booked with you at Newspire, our album mm-hmm. release show, yep. we were like, no, we're not going to play the night before at 611 because then we have to take time to advertise that show at 611. Right. Mm-hmm. Then we're taking less attention off of the actual big show that we're trying to work and push for. Yeah, it- now, we could play 611 and just not advertise about it sure and then that's playing because we love playing but except then it's a ten dollar ticket and then mm-hmm. it's also different where then it's like it's five dollars at new spire or it's ten dollars at 611 you have people that are trying to come in that are 21 yeah, plus so if people show up to the night before and then the the, the yeah. next night they might have come the next day but now they're not you know yeah. it's it's that whole and, that whole thing so we'd I, rather push for <laughs> one thing rather than kind of scramble the bag right? yeah and, and, I, and i think Sully's approach too is just scramble hey scramble I, the bag. that's my new favorite saying i, I, I love that yeah. i'm going to post <laughs> on facebook and just say hey here's the show and it's like i think there's a there's a there's a difference in approaches for sure mm-hmm. and i think for for Sully, i think he's he's a shotgun blast and i think he's just like hey i'm gonna hit everything all at once and it's gonna be powerful and it's gonna be boom i don't know i think that that's a little cynical i think he wants to play Oh no no no! He yeah, just wants but, to play. It's not like I need to blast this place. And no, no 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 no! But I, I just mean from like a I'm I'm gonna shoot one shot and hit as many places as I can. It may not be critical hits, but it's gonna be enough to just kind of like impact. And then I think there's a part of it where it's like for me I'm more of a sniper, right? Where it's like I, I just want one shot <laughs> well, and it's, that's it's, it. It's the whole I've qu- literally like qu- quantity versus quality. Like, do you want to play well, a but, few but, really great shows that have like a big audience, or do you want to play as many as you can, no matter whether they're big and, or small? Or yeah, and I think this is a great conversation that we'll have to pick up. Maybe at, really, at, can we do a version two of this? Can yeah, you guys we, come we, back? We should. Like we another should. episode. Yeah. Like honestly, I'm not even yeah. bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I think part of it's like Sully. I because Chris is so wrong. Yeah, I know. No, I can't I need wait. More time We're gonna roll this over no, next time. I'm like, know. you know what? We had some time to think. Colin's got Colin, a point. Colin was right. Yeah, well, we're going to do another podcast right after this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and what kind of stinks though? Because I think if you were actually going to ask Sully, I think he would say every show's quality though. Because because yeah. again, of course he would. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, yeah. because that's Sully thing to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. And it's like you know, I'm not speaking for Sully, but WWS like, do. God, what would Sully do? And so it's like for me, it's like I think when you got, when you're in that place of like, hey, I got I got nothing to lose. I want to just just play what Sully's doing works. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but if you're in a sense where it's like, hey, for me, like the bins I've always been in, it's always been uh, multiple people. It's been schedules and it's been like, hey, like bad shows like hurt the overall morale. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, OK, like, hey, if I and then because of me always being the booking business guy, it was like, hey, I'm going to plan shows out smart. I'm going to plan out shows where it's like, hey, I need people to push. And then when everybody's going to invite people, it's like, it's going to be beneficial for everybody. So then at the end of the day, I can say, hey, yeah, we got $850 for playing a 45 minute set and two covers. We didn't have to sell our souls or our dicks. How this much is- for a 45 minute set? <laughs> A lot. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah, we uh, we. I don't know where you're playing, but not I, really. I've never heard Matt knows the game, man. So, so he knows the game. Yeah, we. we I, uh, I've had to work. So let me, but, let, let me just say this. Though. We're going to close this out. Then you guys go. are going to set this shit up. Yep. The, the last song, if you guys remember which I, one, yeah. you okay, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. Um, uh, I really want to say this. I, the first record that I reviewed of your guys was about nine years ago. Uh, no eight, way. Eight, maybe? The first eight record? Yeah. Tragic was, Fate it, of Arthur Valente. Yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> that had 2015. Yes, wow. seven. Seven years ago. So seven. Okay, seven. seven. Well, wow. I feel a lot older than that. So, so it's like the band hasn't been together 10 years quite yet. <laughs> so seven years. And, and, and then I joined the band and the review got way better. It that's actually, it did. It very did. Very true. Did. That's very true. No, that's, we still yeah. talk about, do you, do you like, that's very like, true. about the stuff that you said on, on both of those reviews. And I was really happy that we got you to review two in a row because you mentioned the progress that we made and right. that that was the biggest thing for us that it was, that was like awesome you know you're a reviewer right you're not gonna love everything you listen to but you acknowledged like wow these guys if i think one of your quotes was like if this was their high school record this is their master class and right. that was really that was like awesome for us because it was like that's what that's all <laughs> no we it's so funny that you're you bring that up. look at you you're because beaming. i remember that that's exactly <laughs> what i was gonna say there's only one thing that writers like more than writing and that's hearing what they wrote mm-hmm. 
And I remembered that line, which was what I was going to bring up. And <laughs> you, you got me on that. So, so now it's like with, with everything that's going on, I fucking love you guys. Like, obviously I love you guys. Cause I, Sucked your dick on that. I hope, I hope your mom doesn't listen to this. <laughs> no, no, She'll no. laugh. No. No, my mom, the, my, Chris, other well, how will his mom respond? <laughs> she will laugh. She will, yeah. No. But I, I, I just want to say that I, I think that what you guys do is so exciting, and I'm so interested in what's next. And I really am. And I'm not saying that as a bullshit fucker, because I am a bullshit fucker. <laughs> yes, but, you are. But um, those records that you put out, they're so good and so interesting and if there's anything that I could say or want to know is that are you guys going to make sure you keep going with the thing that you have? Even if you play two drum tracks behind you because <laughs> you kick – what's his name? Andy. Andy out. <laughs> Even if you kick him out. Andy's going to kick us out. Well, you keep going because yeah, the two Andy of you – Andy is Marzi Maddox. <laughs> you guys have this. You guys have this sort of musical thing that is very rare. And I know you guys feel that from what I can – uh, they're touching each other now. For those <laughs> touching fingertips. But um, it's it's been such a pleasure to listen to you evolve and and thank, thank you. you so much for coming on this podcast. Of course, I'll get into this last song. Yeah, there, uh, we were talking in between the breaks. Uh, obviously, actually, we were, as we were headbanging to the last music, they have they they have new songs that they're working on. So they're gonna have to oh, come back on and send like, another one. Uh huh. No, okay. no, no, no. So oh, they're, they're, no. they're gonna come back on later and they're gonna play a new song when it's finished. Yeah, when, when, we really, when we've got it. When yeah. it's finished. It'll what do you be, mean play? We'll do. We'll do. We'll do the premiere. We'll do the premiere here. Let's we do, do that. We'll we do, do the that. premiere. So, sure. premiere. so the other thing, would you guys be into bringing two guitars and absolutely performing? Not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you. we absolutely will. Thank you, Matt. I will. We'll play do. only Prince songs to redeem. <laughs> yeah, the we last have to redeem. because the last that time... motherfucker said that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, and we're bringing right. back an old friend for this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, that's right. On Cajon. But, uh, but to answer your question, yeah, no, regardless of, of whatever form, I think me, Marzi Maddox, Matt, and Phoenix, it's it's always going to be them because that's what the band is. The band Don't is, fucking stop. Yeah, Don't no, stop. No, we're not. Even right? if we... Don't right? stop. Even if one day Matt has like a cushy IT job all of a sudden and he's, <laughs> you know, married with a bunch of kids. IT. I, yeah, I don't know. Matt's like, I don't know anything about computers. What the hell are you talking about? But we're gonna. <laughs> you keep... had to teach me how to use Cubase. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna we're gonna always be writing music together, like because, awesome. like you said, that's I, I feel the same way. I I know Matt does too. Like yeah. Um, we just we connect on on being able to work together. I mean, we're we're basically brothers. We've lived together now since we were what, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen. You know. I mean, seventeen technically. I yeah. guess. Are you guys live together of... now? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There's only one year where we didn't live together. Oh. Um. That we. I got a girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, there's a lot of sex sounds. In yeah, there. I was about to say. Well, I mean, earplugs, oh yeah, we know everything about each yeah. other. Earplugs, oh, earplugs are cheap. But before we get into that, we say that for the next one. Uh, Marzi Maddox, the bromance is real. It is. Uh, where, oh, that's the next album title. The bromance is real. I want, is real. I want my ten percent. Uh, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, it's all just at Marzi Maddox. Real simple. Even MarziMaddox.com. It needs yeah. to be updated, but it works. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, buy stuff there. You can buy yeah. stuff. Hell yeah. Like, what, what can you buy? Uh, old shirts that we're Condos. still trying to get rid of. Old Hell shirts yeah. that are probably oh, yeah, not probably in stock. Condos. We really need to redo our stock. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. All right. Uh, what's this last song? This is called The Witch. Is it about the movie? It is exactly about the movie. It is. is it really? Yeah. Yep. That was, well, that was the inspiration. Did in you watch that movie? Is it is it a twenty four movie? I know. We have. I a, know uh, it is. It's on my list. <laughs> it's good. It's good. All right. It's great. Hey, like the Conjuring. But you've not seen that either. No, I've seen the Conjuring. But I mean, in. it was on your list. What, what do you mean about the Conjuring? I'll, I'll tell you off air. Okay. Okay. Hey, Matt, <laughs> Phoenix, Stephen, love you guys. Thanks for coming <laughs> Thank on. Thank you guys. Thank uh, you so much. And this is uh, the Witch about the movie about the band uh, Marzi Maddox.
Could Be Better podcast is produced live from the Could Be Better studios that are definitely not a bedroom in Frederick, Maryland. Check out our website, www.couldbebettermeh.com, for links to our social media, as well as a calendar of events and our contact information for those interested in guesting or supporting the Could Be Better movement. Sure, 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 whatever the hell that is. If you like what you hear, though, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Overcast, or however you're listening to this right now. And don't hesitate to leave us a five-star review, because believe it or not, it actually really helps. Tune in every Thursday for a new episode where we... Okay, 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 that's enough. We've been talking for way too long. Okay, okay. I'm Chris Perry. And I'm Colin McGuire, and we are out of time. So for now, remember, as always, everybody, this could be better.